everyone this is Ross and in today's video we are going to be planting out our tomato plants we're going to talk all about tomatoes how we're going to be growing them this year is really important we'll also touch on the varieties a little bit the ones we've decided to grow we're also today transplanting out the melons we have many melon varieties heirloom varieties heirloom tomatoes we're only doing heirlooms this year it helps save seed and also have just better quality vegetables i think here we also have some things like artichokes, we have squash, different types of squash, different types of melons in here, watermelons, cantaloupe, musk melons, you name it. We're all going to be transplanting all this stuff out into this nice little bed here because this is the south facing bed that actually gets a ton of heat during the day. You can see the sun's shining out right now. It hits the house, the house absorbs that and releases that heat at night. This is a really warm area of my yard probably the warmest area of the yard. This is the best microclimate to be growing these heat loving crops, especially early in the season, because today is not even May 1st yet. And I'm actually planting out these tomatoes. We have no chance of frost, all that's gone. We're really looking good. Also, it's been really warm this April, incredibly warm, to the point where everything in the yard's waking up. Everything on the patio is doing really well. A lot of my in-ground fig trees are waking up. The pomegranate's finally waking up. Um, you can definitely tell the soil temperatures in the ground are going insane. We have lots of cool oven crops that are also coming in and they're doing their thing. Um, you can see this whole other bed over here of all the cool oven crops. We have plenty of mizuna, plenty of arugula, lots of um, radishes at this point of the year. We have something called komatsuna and tatsoi. We've also been able to harvest our sugar snap peas. So we've really got a whole great season of vegetables so far. Um, but now I think it's time to start thinking about putting in all these heat loving crops. And the way we do this historically, sorry for that little shake there. We grow them up these poles as single stem plants. Each plant gets one square foot. I have 18 tomato plants in total a six foot long bed and then there's three rows of them. So we have a total of 18 square feet for 18 plants. Each pole, each each plant grows up these poles. They're about 10 foot tall. They get to even the top if I could get a ladder, but they would go about eight feet. It's as tall as I can tie them. And then I let them come down again as single stem plants and they reach almost the bottom by the end of the season. They reach about three foot up. So in total, they maybe even grow eight foot up and then about five foot down for a total of about 13 feet. And these tomato plants go absolutely berserk because they're in this warm microclimate, because they're grown as single stem plants, they don't have any disease pressure. Even here in Philadelphia, zone 7A, we have lots of rain, lots of humidity. We have no issues with disease. I've been doing this now for two years. And I can honestly say this is a much better way to grow tomato plants. It's a single stem or even multi-stem plants. Growing that vertically, I think, is a much better way than your typical way of growing them. So I want to show you guys how I'm planting them here in just a minute. But I also want to show you guys some of the varieties. We have some from my buddy Joe, who's been growing them from his family in Italy. They've been saving seeds for years, for generations. And I'm growing some of the varieties. He was luck I was lucky enough to get them from him. We're also growing green zebra again, one of my favorites. We're growing some for sauce, alpaca, um, orange banana. We're going to make lots of paste out of our own tomatoes this year. We also have back in here um, Black Beauty, Flamme. We have Green Doctors. We have... Let's see, what's this guy? Black cherry. So we have different types of cherries. We have different types of currants. We have the, the blonde Kopschkin tomato, which I believe is more of a currant type or close to a currant type. Very small cherry tomatoes. But we also have a row back in here, in the middle here, is going to be of the more salad type tomatoes. The tomatoes that are more round, more medium in size. You know, not your typical cherry, but not your typical beefsteak. We've also got some beef steaks in here, like the black crim. We have pink brandy wine. We have green giant. And then now we're going to plant in this video the black beauty, which is the tomato plant that 
a lot of people are raving about it. it's a very black tomato bred by wild boar farms i believe if i'm not mistaken and um this is a really late-ish variety it seems to take a bit to get going but it's supposed to be a really interesting tomato so i'm going to show you guys how i'm doing this we started these plants by the way i should mention we started them february 1st we started them very early inside and you can see now just how tall they are some of them this guy at the tallest is maybe two feet and we actually because we started them so early a lot of you guys had messaged me or mentioned on those videos that i started my tomatoes just way too early they're not going to transplant well um, I had a really good objective of getting these guys to a really good size because I have a friend who's not too far from me. He actually has already planted out his tomatoes sometime around April 15th and he's already getting tomatoes. What he does is he puts black plastic down, really heats up the soil, he adds in some rocks. The plants actually go nuts. He gets tomatoes way before anybody else and it seems to be a really nice way to do it. So that's what we're doing. We're taking this, we're taking the tomatoes seriously this year. We're taking the melons very seriously this year. All heirlooms, like I mentioned. So let's show you guys how to do this because now we have these really big and strong plants. So we just dig ourselves a nice little trench here. That's all that is. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then we're gonna take this plant. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here. We're gonna take the tag, Black Beauty, and then we're gonna place this right in here so we know what this is. We're doing a nice little trial this year. We need to know what varieties they are. We need to know where they're at so we can then grow them again next year. That's the whole point of growing an heirloom variety, right? We're gonna cut this bag off. This one is not really well rooted, it seems. Not a very vigorous plant. We're going to take this out of here. The other ones have been completely root bound, by the way, so far. And then you can see right in here, this was the three inch by three inch pot that we started these tomato plants in indoors. Then we took this pot once they got root bound and put them into the half gallon size grow bags. And now I'm going to place this here in the trench. Very simply, we're going to cover this back in with the soil we took out. We're going to bury the stem, by the way, to get some extra ability to form roots along the stem. And that's it. So let me show you now. You can see the stems all the way over here. We buried it, but also we're going to lift this up. And this will be trained then against the pole. And that's it. It's really that simple. From this point on, it goes up and up and up. And what we could do is come in here, by the way, because we've already planted out some of these. Let's look at pink brandywine for an example. I don't necessarily need this lower growth. It's not very healthy. It doesn't look too good. It's actually very close to the ground. So what we do is we're gonna take off some of that growth with the scissors. We train this up. And what we do as we go is that, let's say that this tomato plant is gonna form its first cluster of fruits somewhere around here. Once that cluster is formed and it finishes fruiting, we're then gonna take out all the lower growth. Any of the growth below as well that seems diseased, doesn't look too good. You can see this growth here. We're gonna cut all this out. If you see any yellowing, you see any disease, all gone, all in the name of promoting good disease resistance and good airflow. Okay, so that's really it guys. It's really simple. We're putting them in a trench. Trench. We're training them up a pole vertically. Single stem plants. We have to come in here, and you can see. I guess this is a good example here. We've got our main stem right here, but we also have a shoot coming off. This is a nice little sucker they call them. You take off the suckers as we go up, and we tie them to the poles as we go up. And I'm going to have tomatoes. I would expect this year, maybe even sometime in early July, off my beef steaks all the way to the end of the year before frost. And that's all it is. There's no succession planting. I plant these once and they keep going all year for me. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. We'll catch you for tomorrow's video, okay? Take care and hopefully you guys can like this one. Share this with your friends. Whoever's interested in growing tomato plants, share this with that person. 
This, in my opinion, is one of the best ways, if not the best way to do this here in my climate. Um, highly recommend it. You try it. Try it different ways. That's really the beauty of growing. There's so many different ways to do the same thing. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, guys. Check out the new website, rossreddy.wixsite.com slash blog, and I will catch you all tomorrow. Take care, guys.